Hello everyone, this is CJ Novo 992 and today we're back for another brand new video and it's almost that time. In fact, if you look at the old clock, we are less than 24 hours away from another famous massive European night at Ibrox and gone back through previous years and the highs than some of the lows that we've actually had, but more about the highs. We are going to need to muster every bit of European magic we can from those games and drip it all over and rain it all over the Portuguese side tomorrow if we do a barest of bare bones as a squad can go ahead and shock the world again. And I feel like I need to say, because I don't know if it's coming across on the camera by the time I get to the old editing, but there is sweat coming down the noggin right now. And that's not only because of the nerves and the anticipation of what will be a massive European night, but we've got a couple charity events coming up soon on the old channel. So I'm back doing some cardio and I'm back doing some work and the napper is sweating. Troop, some might say I look glistening. Stop that. Stop that. Others will say I look like Doc Holliday and Tombstone and that's probably a bit more fair and aye, I should probably stop making references to movies that only free people will ever get in this channel. But aye, ladies and gentlemen, for those who do get that reference, what a film, what a reference, what a performance for Val Kilmer. For those that don't, I'm actually going to go ahead and talk about what you want to hear in today's video and that is going to be Rangers versus Benfica and if you didn't mind hitting the like button at any point during this video that would be greatly, greatly appreciated because I'll be honest with you, I find myself in this weird position as we've already discussed Benfica last week and honestly I could just sit here and just read out all my notes, they're still written down, kind of scattered over there for this Benfica side and by god it'd be so easy just to copy every little note right there but we're not going to do that in today's video because now that is the second leg it is the final dance, it is do or die time in terms of this Euro European tie, it drastically changes the conversation, so if you watched last week's preview video, don't worry, we're not going to sit and repeat everything from that video, I didn't need to break down how this Benfica sides play, I didn't need to do this, we've seen them now with our own eyes, we know what they're good at, passing the football boot, they're attacking play and diving on the park and we know where they're weak and that is defensively, but there is a couple of very important updates I feel like you need to know about the Benfica squad and then of course we'll get to what matters most. And that's Rangers. So it's more of an oppositional update rather than an oppositional preview, but update takes me to where I want to actually go next, talking about this Benfica side, because how have they performed at the weekend? Again, they were unbeaten in 22 games before coming up against Sporting Lisbon, getting beat off ben, eh, Porto and then drawing with us. That's their worst run of the season in terms of zero wins out of those three games. Did they respond at the weekend? Are they still limping? Are they still low of confidence? Well, unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, I have to bring to you the news that Benfica is back in winning ways as they won 3-1 in the old Portuguese league. And a game of football that they dominated possession, but it was a wide, wide open game of football that's very encouraging from a Rangers fan considering how many chances they gifted to the opposition. But there might be a couple reasons for that and this is the biggest talking point I want regarding Benfica because Benfica from our game to the game at the weekend made six changes in total. Six players were rotated out from the start 11 versus us, which is of course over half, then they played at the weekend just to give them a little bit of rest. That's including two of their centre-backs. Now, to be fair, Otamendi was suspended. Surprise, surprise, he was sent off versus Porto. But again, if everything I've been able to see, he'd have been rested anyway. And they're actually delighted that their captain and their other centre-back partner was able to get a wee bit of time off to fo focus on nothing but this football club. They're number 87, we Neves in the middle of the park. The next guy who's expected to go for a lot of money, he was rested at the weekend. Rafa Silva, the always dangerous Rafa Silva, was rotated as was their number nine up top and the man who embarrassed himself and who honestly shouldn't even be involved in this tie in the second leg if the referee didn't swallow his whistle and was too scared to send off a World Cup winner for diving numerous, numerous times and doing a ridiculous slide challenge on John Souter in the 94th minute when he was already on a book and that is none of that than Di Maria. They have rotated, they have rested, they have been given an opportunity to focus on nothing but Rangers with six of their spine of their team and Aye, imagine that, eh? imagine being able to rotate your squad and not be doing it to the barest the bare bones when you have to play the exact same start in 11 again and actually lose two further players again from that through injury. Eh? Lucky, 
lucky Benfica. And I know it's the most obvious thing in the world to actually mention in today's video, but I'm very interested to see how those two different approaches and two approaches that were pretty much forced on both teams in terms of rotating for Benfica as the press, the fans, they're raging that they couldn't beat this Rangers side. This was supposed to be an easy test for them. Now, you could feel it in the stadium, you could hear it, you, you heard them speaking about it, and you could see it in the players' faces. They were fuming. They couldn't beat us, so they've rotated, they've rested, they're ready to go. And then on the other side, you have the Rangers side who had to play the exact same starting 11. A starting 11 that looked jaded versus Benfica, looked jaded in parts versus Hibs, and then had to go through the war and through the trenches that that actually was. So, very interested to see what approach actually works out. Are they going to be the fresher? Are they going to be zipping out? Or is this siege mentality that Phil Clement's injecting in to this Rangers side, the war, pull up your soaks, get in the trenches and battle and fight for each other? Is that going to be enough as a core mentality to overcome? What are Still the favourites, I believe, in terms of going through and probably rightly so when you look at the amount of value they've got in their squad. World Cup winners, guys, it's worth all this amount of money. Guys are expected to go for X amount in the next year or two. They are the favourites. Well, Rangers have got to take that, ladies and gentlemen, and take it back to Ibrox and just hope they've got one more European magic in them at this point as we need it or it will be the last European preview of the season. And the European magic we've referenced several times in today's video actually gives me the perfect breaking point away from talking about Benfica and getting to the Rangers end because one of the reasons the European magic has happened at Ibrox is because of the electrifying shake the stadium, shake the camera atmosphere that the crowd is actually given and obviously Clement's been out pretty much all week hoping to see it, banging on it and praising it and rightly so, it is absolutely terrific and it's not just a Rangers fan applauding Rangers fans for being a phenomenal support. No, you've seen player after player, manager after manager, our European run, you've had Jude Bellingham, you've had guys that's about in terms of the old football world, talking about what their mentality was and how the atmosphere changed. Guys like Buffon, one of the best players in the last umpteen years, still to this day, talks about the atmosphere that he faced at Ibrox, and that is what's truly needed, and I referenced the stadium and Benfica fans and all that, and a lot of them were saying they needed to win that game, you know what I mean, we met some nice people just in front of us, and they shook their hands and everything like that, said, good luck, we needed to win that one, as they don't know how those, those players will react to the hostile environment that they'll face at Ibrox, and hopefully that ends up coming, but again, a lot of the atmosphere and a lot of the European magic is all down to how these players actually perform and how long the stadium is rocking is solely on their shoulders. For me, given how they played last week, they were outstanding to a man. Even Connor Goldson, ladies and gentlemen, I know he's been crucified all week for the own goal, but there's a lot actually in that if you look at it. There's no shout for Butlin, the communication needs to be better, and then Goldson needs to be better as well. I'm not making excuses for him, but there's a lot more that goes into football. If he gets a shout there to leave it or anything like that, he's reacted to it, he's putting his big heat on it, and the ball goes into the back of net. And you know what I mean? Sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, and unfortunately, he was neither on that occasion. But in terms of the match, he was fantastic, as was pretty much the entire defence led by, in my opinion, the best defender on the day. That was Ree Redvan Yilmaz. And I think if you look at how statistically Benfica is as an attacking side, one of the best left in European competitions, we can take a lot from last week and take it in to this game. They're so good on paper. They tick all these books. A great attacking here, statistical here, here, here. Well, they did they score and penetrate our back line in open play. The way that they did break the scoreline was an own goal which we've already referenced which was really unlucky for Connor Goldson and a handball penalty from John Souter that if you didn't catch my Hibs preview video we showed the official rules of the game and I'll throw them up once more so everybody can really get a good view of this the penalty that we conceded in Benfica or Lisbon whatever you want to say shouldn't they have actually happened in their own laws of the game. John Suter heathers it on to his own arm, meaning it should not be a penalty kick. I don't know why the referees gave it. Now, there's a lot of stories coming out and everyone's saying now the referee didn't get all the angles of it and didn't actually get to see the angle that shows it clearly coming off Suter's heat in to his arm. Well, if that's the case, ladies and gentlemen, I simply have to ask why the VAR officials didn't allow the referee to see the highlight, to see the replay that would have ruled this handball 
aren't nil. Factor in rubbish the penalty claim. Why is no one making a bigger deal of that? Why is that no discussion? I think we can feel really, really aggrieved for last week because we certainly deserved it on the part with what we gave in the game. But the referee slash VAR officials making a massive mistake and the referee bottling sending off Di Maria. It should really piss off every single person associated with Rangers Football Club, including the players on the park. And I'm just hoping they can use that. It's just an extra bit of motivation. You know what I mean? Like Barry Ferguson and used to put the newspapers in his locker and everything and read what everyone was saying he's finished here he's no good anymore he's no this this use that as the motivation they were robbed a famous victory last week but go out in your home surface on your home ground and go and get it but of course we're talking about Rangers Football Club so you know where we're going to go next with the latest injury news and a player that was vital to not only obviously scoring in the game of football his first professional goal at that point but just defensively helping out Tavernier nullifying the right side tracking his runner Sterling will be missing tomorrow's game and it just it's sickening it really really is and it's probably the most Rangers thing imaginable that the player that can play anywhere on the park that can cover every single position available on the park if there's injuries and players missing is now missing the next game and that's the biggest blow for me I think is his physicality they wanted nothing to do with him they were terrified of him in the game and it's a real shame he's going to be missing the game but there is some good news if we can look at it that way in terms of our season I know some people doesn't care about Europe anymore they just want to understand that so you'll be happy at this point Sterling it will be assessed again at the weekend as it's nothing too serious he's going to be missing tomorrow as it's far too soon but it shouldn't be a long term injury or an injury that should keep him out for numerous games ladies and gentlemen Dundee might be too soon but you're talking about after the international break so that is a massive massive win because when I seen him clutching the hammy I thought he was done for about two months ladies and gentlemen the fact he could be back for our next game in terms of the bench and then be back ready to go for a one after that is a sensational win in our favour and all I can hope is the players that's gone on to the park can go ahead and give out a performance like the big man did versus Benfica. But again, it's interesting as we Ross McCausland's trained as well, but he's went off the last three games injured. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you do with that? We are doing... I wouldn't even say the barest of bare bones anyway. I feel like we're on bone dust now. You know what I mean? The only good news is the fact that Todd Cantwell is available for se selection, not anywhere near 90 minutes, Phil Claymont said. So we've lost maybe the physicality is Sterling, but you're getting someone like Cantwell that can create an unanswered Ibrox surface with the atmosphere being what it is you might just need him for the last 15-20 minutes to come up with a moment in magic because again the likes of Tom Lawrence's He's got his own injured pass when it comes to Rangers. Never had one before, but he does for Rangers. So he will not be able to play the 90 minutes. So to have Lawrence and Cantwell there available for this game could be the difference maker. And I wouldn't be surprised if Cantwell comes on and provides the last little bit of magic that's required for us. That's all I can hope. But that's it in terms of your latest injury news. Everything else remains to be uh, the same as last time. Sterling is now missing. Ross McCausland will be a call on the day, but it's probably going to be for the bench. Cantwell is back, but he's nowhere near ready to play the 90 minutes. So I want to know what you're feeling ahead of this game. It is a massive, massive game. I know some people, again, aren't interested in Europe and wouldn't be disappointed if we did get knocked out the more as they want to just focus on the league and win the treble, etc, etc. I get that, but I just love to see my team win every game possible I love to see my team play and I would love another European away day coming in the next leg ladies and gentlemen and I let me know what your thoughts and opinions are down there in the comment section below we are well and truly up against it again the squad is heavily restricted the squad is heavily jaded we badly need this international break but anywhere else you think nah it's maybe a bit too much but Ibrox with the atmosphere with that manager I think we may, we, we may just come across and fight and punch upwards once again, ladies and gentlemen, and with the Thai favourite in terms of Benfica. But let me know your predictions down there in the comment section below and who would you actually play. Are we going to see a Cantwell assist followed by a roof goal in the last 15, 20 minutes? I wouldn't be against it, ladies and gentlemen. And that's what I'm going to predict. I'm going to go ahead and predict a scoreline I've never predicted before. I'm going to predict goals in this game, which... I feel like it could probably go the opposite. It could be a very, very tight affair. But I'm going to go Rangers 3. I know, I say it. Dessers, do it, son. 
two. It could go either way. It should go either way. But I just hope my boys can come ahead and do it because they deserved their win last week. And I just hope the way fate actually balances out the get the win that they deserved that the ref robbed them of last week. What about you? Let me know your thoughts and opinions down there in the comment section below. And as always, I will see you tomorrow after the game. If you're gone, enjoy yourself. If anyone's sick and need to miss work now, hopefully you feel better soon and everything like that. And until then, thank you so much for watching. Happy Siege 92. All the best and bye.